What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Today we're gonna be painting up a trooper from the First Legion. The First Legion is the Dark Angels. So, lucky us, we are gonna dig into this. This guy is from the Dark Vengeance box kit, and the goal is that I want to take him up to quality of this fellow here. When I was painting up my test models, you can see that um, the highlights, I got a little zealous with the highlights. They almost look like salamanders. So um, if you don't want your guys to be this bright on the highlights, then you don't have to. But I kind of like them. I think they stand out from the, from the rest of the models on the field. And um, here's a sergeant guy. My goal is to get our guy painted up to an approximation of this. So this is what your model should look like by the end of the videos. Probably two videos, like most of my tutorials are two videos nowadays. So step one is going to be base coats and um, shades. Step two is going to be highlights and detail work. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to base coat him in Caliban Green. Now because green is the predominant color, this is what I like to base coat him in completely first. You want to use a nice size brush, so something that says like base coat or regimen or um, you know something something that has a big a big head on it. Yeah, so, um, for all of you who haven't seen my, my video plugging my friend D's Project One Gaming company, you should definitely check him out. Great, great group of artists, and um, he's just been so supportive of me. So many of you out there in the YouTubes have been really supportive of me and um, my channel. So. I mean, if I could, I would plug all of you, but I mean, you know, like Tabletop Painting, Blue Cloud Andrew, Nurgle's Nastiest, Blue Trilobite, all of you guys out there, I mean, all of you, all of the guys who, who join in on my crazy projects like Feral Strike, Sir Lathan, 58 Kirk, I mean, you guys are just be best so so thanks so much for all of the support and yeah if, if you don't have the time the patience the energy to do up an army and you always wanted to have one done these guys over at project one gaming offer such competitive rates and just really great prices so I know though if you're watching these videos to learn how to do it yourself then maybe that might not be something you're interested in, but you never know. Maybe somebody you know who's thinking of getting into the game could use that kind of service. My goal with these videos and my whole channel, like the goal of my channel is to get people to feel comfortable painting to what I consider to be a pretty good quality tabletop standard. I mean. This guy isn't gonna win any golden demons, but I think it is pretty pretty good quality for putting on a table. Okay, so while the green is drying, we are jumping onto a whole bunch of different steps so that we can keep keep working so that we don't have to ever shut this thing off and go do something else. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to find us some lead belcher and we're going to paint in the silver bits because I know when I'm motivated to paint then I kind of want to get it all done rather than having to go back and do something else also if you're batch painting that will solve a lot of this problems as well because you know if you're batch painting the minute you're done with 
one guy, you go on to the next, get all the greens knocked out at once, and by the time you get back, or by the time you're done, you reach the end of it, then um, you can go back to the first guy and do something else. I'm doing a, I'm, or the plan is in November, I'm going to be doing a series of videos on how to, um, actually it's, it's, it's going to be a bunch of videos about what to do if you're a, how to approach painting from like a, a new painter standpoint. So a lot of tips and tricks that us veterans might take for granted that new people might not know about. For example, um, priming your models. I'm going to see if I can uh, actually get the camera and convince my lady friend to come outside with me and shoot some video on how to how I prime my models and um, you know just how hold how you hold them, how far you hold the model from the spray can and um, just stuff like that. Okay, so we're also going to be painting Lead Belcher the little exhaust ports on the backpack. If they're not dry, then you can just come back to them later, but um, that's another thing. When you're doing base coats like your Caliban Green, you don't want to... You want to get them over the entire model, but you do want to be careful that you don't overdo it too much and leave huge giant pools of paint that need to dry before you can move on with the model. So yeah, base or priming, like for example, I always prime my models in duplicolor gray primer and no matter how many times I say that, somebody always will write on a, on a video, did you prime your model first? You should prime your model first and um, I don't mind always answering that I do because Everybody, you know, not everybody's been watching videos on my channel for as long as my more dedicated fans, but yeah, I think having a video that I can link to or reference that just kind of shows my process of how to prep a model and how to spray prime it and all that other stuff might be good. Okay, I'm going to come back to do... When I was talking about exhaust ports, I meant these four things on the side there. So we'll come back to that. There's a couple more things we can do with our um, lead belcher, but we'll come back to that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take some black. So this is either your Abaddon black from the new range or Chaos black. Um, there's just so much, so much of the old paints that I haven't used up yet that one day they're all going to be gone. Like Padaba Black Master. Yes, Igor, one day Padaba Black 2 will be gone. <laughs> so with our Chaos Black, what we're going to do is we're going to find the Under Armour. Or the, actually, the, I wouldn't call them Under Armour joints, maybe. The rubber joints. In my head, they're rubber. I don't know what they actually are. So behind the knees. Um, up right by the bottom of the butt plate. And if you've got some Taliban, Taliban! Caliban green. That would your bed slip monster. I know. Get some Caliban green drying, then just come back to it. Chaos black is also going to be used, or your black color of choice is also going to be used to paint the belt and any pouches. So let's get that squared away now. Most of these models in Dark Vengeance kit have their pouches on the right side. Uh, some of them have pouches on the left as well, and they've also got grenades hanging. So this is where your Caliban green is going to be pooling and drying. If you just have any, 
So we're just painting over all that. You can wait for it to dry and come back later, or you can just spread it around. There. Really not everyone's gonna see it, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And we can touch up and clean up all the mistakes later. So yeah, another hobby beginner video that I'm gonna film is how to do highlighting. A lot of people don't know how to how to highlight, so I talk about what my process is, how I go about doing it, all that kind of stuff. How you choose your highlight colors, etc. etc. Okay, we're gonna take corn red. Yes. That's my corn red. Here we go. So the Dark Angels, as the First Legion, are just steeped in history and their fluff and their story goes back, way back to, um, you know, when the first, when the game first came out in Rogue Trader and these Marines, called the Dark Angels, back then as well, were actually armored in black armor plate instead of this green. And um, what's funny was that, in, I remember when it first, when all the background for these guys first came out in the first edition of Rogue Trader, they were very much like Native Americans. Their history was very Native American. Um, they had a lot of feather totems hanging off of their armor. A lot of their names were very much like the old Native American warrior names of the past and um, I don't know at what point they kind of moved away from that and and now they're just their story is just so amazing and awesome and you can look up if, if you ever want a good read I highly recommend just googling the name of you know anything in 40k and going to the the Lexicanum site or the wiki site and just reading all about the history, the story, the, the characters, the um, just the background, the fluff of of the, the armies in 40k and fantasy too. They're all just so well done and well written in the current universe, the current iteration of the game that it really makes it much more fun to dive into than just saying, oh yeah, it's blue armor guys fighting gray armor guys. When you actually have and develop your your history for your characters and your army, like that's the most fun to me, finding a concept for an army and basing it around that. You know, you've got people like the, the power gamers who just want to build a super competitive, unbreakable list and just go and table everyone in competitions. And then you've got people who build their lists and um, just want to have a good time and enjoy really the storytelling aspect of the game. And I like that. I like when, when you can tell a story with, with your army when your opponent looks across the table at you and thinks, wow, that is a really cool looking army. And when your army does cool things and you reward them by, by modeling things up. I don't know if I mentioned this story before, but my Orc and Goblins army, once I fought a Vampire Counts player and I had a Black Orc Standard Bearer battle standard bearer at the time and he kind of held out against a super killy vampire lord for a very very long time he didn't manage to ever do any damage or anything but the vampire lord just couldn't kill him like he kept making his his armor saving throws and uh, he was like just indestructible just holding the line and so I rewarded him by um, building up a battle standard bearer and 
repainting his armor to reflect the fight that he was in and you know it's just fun and awesome and then when you know I saw my my opponent the next week you know it's just cool to talk about and laugh about and those old those war stories are what really makes the game so much fun and you can sit across your friend at like the local restaurant after the game and just talk about what happened and all the craziness over over a beer and some burgers and fries everybody has a good time okay so looks like the vents are still drying a little we're gonna let them dry a little bit more so we're gonna take some oh where is it Rackard flesh and Zandri dust these are our two bone colors that we're gonna kind of use to decorate the model so Rackard flesh you'll notice that in the Dark Vengeance, all the pictures and stuff. The left knee pad is done in a quarter style, which means that it's divided into four quarters, and they're painted. Let's see a good example of it. Like the bottom, the bottom and the top corners are painted in the bone, and the other two are left in green. So what we're gonna do is zoom in so we can we can show you how I'm gonna do this. Paint it on. Paint that bad boy on. So I like to start from center and work my way out. And instead of starting from like the lines and working my way towards the center, I kind of start in the middle of where the design would go. And then I kind of pull the paint out like that. That way if you make a mistake, you can just repaint over your mistake. Lines clean up really really nicely because the paint isn't built up and hopefully so kind of like a fan from the center until you've got until you've got your design. Oh my gosh Igor you are completely incompetent. No, that's not very nice. Sorry about that, Igor. I need to be mean, but a lot of people want to know how I do this checker pattern, or this uh, quarter pattern. Oh no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> So now that we've got a base for that, we're gonna let that dry a little bit and then we're gonna come back to it. I'm gonna take Xandri dust now and this is the base that I paint the chest plate actually. It's a little bit more yellow than Rackard flesh. Rackard flesh is pretty pale. It's a pretty pale bone color in comparison. Mm, the trouble with Xandri dust though is that it is it is pretty thin in the pot, so. Shaking it up beforehand is recommended. Then you don't have to use a wet palette. I found with the base colors, you don't have to. You can just wipe the majority of it off on a Kleenex or a napkin, and that should do you fine. A wet palette where that is really useful is for some of the the lighter colors like Uthuan gray, uh, ceramite white, anything that's like a light gray or a white. I've noticed that most of them are really thick, I guess is a good word. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take our rack hard flesh now and we are going to use this for all of the purity seals. So double check that all of your purity seals are painted corn red for the wax and for the parchment, rack art flesh. So what kind of Space Marine player should you be in order to take the Dark Angels if you're just using them from a fluff standpoint? As the superhuman futuristic warrior monks go, the Dark Angels are 
very cool in that they are able to take three distinctive um, color schemes. Most armies, you know, you have a main color, like ultramarines have blue, black templars, obviously black, blood angels red, and that pretty much, well blood angels also have death company so they don't count, but that one color pretty much denotes how you're going to paint all their models. For example, all ultramarines are like blue, predominantly, and they have different color accents, accent colors. So <clears throat> and most space marines are like that. Most space marine chapters are like that. But the dark angels, they actually have three different, completely different color schemes for their soldiers, depending on which part of the army they fight in. So you've got your regular green armored boys here. You've got the Raven Wing, which are like the motorcycle riders. And they are painted completely in black because black was the original color, like I said, of the, of the Dark Angels. <clears throat> and you've also got the cream bone colored Terminators. And why they are that color is because uh, in one story back when the Terminators were wearing all black like the pre-Heresy Legion troops all wore they were called upon to defend the world and the, the odds were very grim so they decided that one of the traditions in the unit from the, the planet Caliban I guess I, I think it was Caliban is that the troopers knowing that they're going to die ritually paint their armor the color of bone to signify that they are already dead. So the Terminators did this, ex um, kind of expecting that they were not going to make it out. And lo and behold, they fought so well and did so well against the enemy. I think it was Tyranids they were fighting. They did so well that they managed to escape, win the day, live to fight another day. And I guess as honor the rest of the, or to honor them, the rest of the company adopted the black color scheme, or uh, adopted the bone colored color scheme, as it were. So really cool fluff, really cool stories. The entire Dark Angels uh, history, even, is just really, really macabre and and sinister. And most legions have a very dark and um, like I guess you'd say grim dark past <clears throat> and the Dark Angels is pretty bad in that they were expected to fly immediately back to Earth at the end of the Horus Heresy and you know kick horses but but they the Primarch kind of held his legion back and he was saying that I don't remember if it was warp storms or he gave some kind of excuse saying I'm coming I'll be right there uh, hold off the traitor till I get there but then a lot of people were saying that he was holding back because he was still trying to decide whether or not he was going to join with Horus at the siege of the Palace of Terra which is a huge huge deal considering that if Lionel Johnson did turn against the Emperor and humanity at the battle or at the gates of Terra then it would have changed completely the ending of the history of the universe in the game as we know it. So you've got that going on. Um, oops, when the Dark Angels returned to Caliban after, after they did help the forces of good at the siege of the Palace of Terra, then they were fired upon by their own legion. Their own legion was split in half by civil war. Half of them wanted to follow this guy Luther, and the other half didn't, and just the whole story is just so awesome about, about the Dark Angels. So really cool legion to choose to fight as. Celestia Grey. Their, their characteristics now is that they 
they travel the galaxy now searching for members of their original legion that broke away and joined forces with Luther and they became known as the Fallen and the Dark Angels I guess in in a show of that they were going to hunt down and execute all of the fallen marines is that they they change their color from black to this dark green so of all the quote unquote loyalists the good guy legions I think the dark angels really have one of the best one of the best stories, one of the most tragic and one of the one of the best stories for players out there. The fact that you could just play them as um, younger, newer marines who who don't know anything about their their history and their. Um, all of the events that made them who they are today or you could play them as veterans of the long long war against the the fallen and people of the inner circle who know about the fallen and their mission the dark angels mission to hunt them down and kill all of them i think it gives you a lot of <clears throat> a lot of range for what kind of what kind of army you want to have I've also seen some guys playing armies of all black armored dark angels and that is the coolest and he's um, this one guy in particular says that he's playing he, he painted up his space marines as the fallen and says that he's always loved their story and that he's of the mindset that Luther the great betrayer who betrayed the Primarch um, did it because he thought that the lion was Lionel Johnson was turning to chaos and that he believed he was serving the Emperor and humanity by by attacking him so I mean just that awesome dynamic that there is no there there is no good quote-unquote good guy force there's just a whole bunch of shades of gray in this game and green yes gray and green so as you can see I was painting up the was cleaning up my mistakes on the emblem here and just about everything is done, it looks like. I'm gonna take some Balthazar gold now and paint the little skull on the Marine's helmet. We're gonna do the silver on the, um, on the exhaust ports. And that should be it for this model, for step one. It should be just about it before, I mean, before we get to the uh, highlights. So we're going back to lead belcher and these exhaust ports. The great thing about the Dark Vengeance box set is that it, each of the Dark Angels, even in this tactical squad, they they look so good. They're all packed with the Dark Angel iconography, which is the winged sword. Um, and each one of them looks really beefy and, and mean. I'm also going to use this lead belt or paint to paint the grenade hanging on this guy's belt and I think that's 
it. He's got little dial things on the side of his helmet. And paint those silver. Alright, so our base coats are pretty much done. Now we're going to get on to the highlighting, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> 